We're now going to take a look at integration by substitution, and we're going to use this now with definite integrals. We're going to look at this question, and we're going to look at it two different ways. So this first time that we do it, it's going to look exactly like what we just did in our last video. We're going to take whatever the composite function is and say that's u. So u is x squared plus 1. The derivative of u is 2x dx. And now we're going to rewrite this using u and du. Now, in order for du to work, I need 2x dx, so I'm going to put a 2 here, but a 1 half on the outside so that I essentially haven't done anything. So I've got 1 half, and then this is u cubed, and then 2x dx is du. So from here, I would take the 1 half on the outside, u to the third would be u to the fourth over 4, and then again from 0 to 1. But in order for me to use this, I would actually have to um, replace u with the function that is u. So the u is x squared plus 1 to the fourth over 8. And again, I don't need a plus c because this is a definite integral. So what I did was I took my original function, I replaced u into the function, I integrated with respect to u, I replaced u back with the x function, and now I'm going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. So I'm going to start with 1. 1 squared plus 1 is 2. 2 to the fourth is 16. Over 8 is 2. Minus 0. So 0 squared plus 1 is 1. 1 to the fourth is 1 over 8. And I end up with 2 minus 1 eighth, which is 15 eighths. And that would be my final solution. Now let's look at how I can do this um, with probably exactly the same amount of work, but a little bit different work. So instead of replacing u and then putting x back into the function, our other option is to actually just change the limits of integration and rewrite everything in terms of whatever that other function was. So let me tell you what I mean by that. This is the exact same question we just did and we already found the solution. If I said that u was x squared plus one and du was two x dx, what I want to do is essentially find u of zero. So I'm going to take u of zero which is 0 squared plus 1. And I'm going to take u of 1, which is 1 squared plus 1. And I'm going to rewrite this the, as the integral from not 0 to 1, but 1 to 2. And I'm going to use my um, whatever my u function is. So just as I did before, this would have to be a 2, and this would be a 1 half. So I'm integrating 1 half u to the third du which would give me 1 half u to the fourth over 4 integrated from 1 to 2. So what I'm going to do this time is I had to do this extra step to find the new limits of integration, but now I don't have to plug the 2 or the x squared plus 1 back in. I can just take u to the fourth over 8. So 2 to the fourth over 8, that's 16 over 8, which is 2. And then plugging 1 in, 1 half times 1 fourth, which would be minus 1 eighth. So 2 minus 1 eighth is 15 eighths, and I get the exact same solution I did before. So is there one way better than the other? This one's technically more correct, because once I change this to u, I should be changing those limits of integration with respect to u. So this is the way that you should do it. Um, but I'll probably let you get away with the other way as long as you remember if you're not changing limits of integration You do have to go back and replace u with the function All right, let's try this question again using change of variables So we're going to practice by changing those limits of integration My initial steps are the same. I find u to be the composite function or function within another function So x cubed plus 1 this is going to be u the du is the derivative of that, so just 3x squared, include the dx. And then 
the extra step is we're going to go ahead and find those new limits of integration using the existing limits of integration. So u of 0 is 0 cubed plus 1, and u of 3 is 3 cubed plus 1, which is 28. So I'm going to rewrite this as the integral from 1 to 28. Um, this obviously is u cubed, but in order to fit the pattern, I need 3x squared dx, and I have 2x squared dx. So I need to multiply by 3 and divide by 2, which means on the outside, I'm doing the opposite so that it works out to me essentially not having done anything. So this is 2 thirds integral from 1 to 28 of u cubed du. So I have 2 thirds u cubed turns into u to the fourth over 4 integrated from 1 to 28. I'm going to go ahead and reduce that a little bit. So I'm going to call this u to the fourth over 6 from 1 to 28. So u to the fourth, um, starting with 28. So 28 is 614656 over 6. And then minus 1 to the fourth, which is just 1, 6. So obviously that gives me 614,655 over 6. And if I turn that into a decimal, it's 102,442.5. And whenever you're doing a question like this, I strongly encourage you to break that calculator back out, write the original function using that math nine in your TI-84. Um, I've done it myself, and this is the exact response that I got using the calculator. Last one for you to try on your own. When you're ready, press play to see how you did. So again, I'm going to start by defining u to be 3x squared plus 2. And then du is the derivative of that. So that's 6x dx. So I'm also going to find u of 1. So that's 3 times 1 squared, which is just 3, plus 2 is 5. And then u of 3 would be 3 times 3 squared, or 9, so that's 27 plus 2, or 29. So when I rewrite this, I'm going to integrate from 5 to 29, and now I just need to make sure it fits the pattern. So this is u to the 1 half, but this is 6x dx, and I only have 3, so I need to multiply it by 2 on the inside, so 1 half on the outside. Now I can write it as 1 half, the integral from 5 to 29 of u to the 1 half du. Um, when I integrate, u to the 1 half gives me u to the 3 halves divided by 3 halves, or 2 thirds u to the 3 halves, integrated from 5 to 29. Reducing this a little bit gives me u to the 3 halves over 3 from 5 to 29. So this one's going to turn out pretty ugly um, because I'm going to end up with 29 to the 3 halves over 3 and then minus 5 to the 3 halves over 3. Now notice it says find your solution to the nearest 10 thousandth. So it's okay for us to um, leave this and then really just find the solution using our calculator from here. So that's really all I'm going to show. And then I get 48.3298. So that's the nearest 10 thousandth. Uh, and this of course would be approximately equals. And that would be my final solution. That is all for chapter four. So we are going to move on to chapter five. And chapter five is integration and differentiation with the transcendental functions. So we're going to start with a little bit of a review of the natural log function and the natural exponential function.